is the book of Jude, verses 20 and 21. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, unto eternal life. Call Allah Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Next, double honors to the elders and apostles who rule well, well and teach real well, well and oversees the tabernacle of David. And peace and salutations to the sincere elect of Israel scattered across the four corners of the earth. All right, to y'all, I'd like to say Shalom. It's your brother Eliyah coming back with another exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai uh, with the men of Israel camp in Greenville, South Carolina. All right, without too much else to say, let's jump right back into it. This is Jude 1 and verses 20 and 21. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Right? So that is really what we're called to do, you know, continue to build ourselves up, right, on the most holy faith. Right? What is a faith? It's uh, who this word ignorantly calls Jesus, who we know in the Hebrew, his real name is Yahweh Shai. He's our redeemer. That's what Yahweh Shai means in the Hebrew. He is the one who's going to come and redeem the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, the, the black, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, back to their father, back to their power and their Lord, Yahweh, you know, who in the Hebrew, his name means he is or he exists, you know. That's our most holy faith, you know, redeeming us from under the hand of, of the devil that the Bible speaks of, which is the so-called white man, woman, and child, you know, their rulership in the earth. You know, the Lord is coming to redeem us from this kingdom of darkness and wickedness. But we're supposed to continue to build ourselves up on that holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, this is really the point of this um, exhortation, because I, I feel uh, from what I've witnessed and I, and I believe uh, through the spirit that the Lord has revealed to me that um, that this is a good reason why most brothers who are in this truth, they, they come into the knowledge of the truth and they come into the knowledge of this most holy faith. However, they don't continue to build themselves up, right, by praying in the Holy Spirit, right? There's a lot of brothers who, who know about certain precepts and who know about certain breakdowns, you know. At the same time, that's all they know because they're no longer, they're, they're not praying in the Holy Spirit as they ought, you know. To, to constantly continue to uh, cry to the Lord and ask the Lord to continue to build them up and to give them, continue pouring into them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you know. Because you can come into this truth and have a certain understanding. However, we're supposed to be constantly growing and constantly building up ourselves, you know. So it says in verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, right? And how do you do that? What, is, what does it mean to love Yahweh? You know, what, what does that look like? And it says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach unto eternal life, you know. So let's get what that love is. Just a quick precept. I didn't have this down, but you know, through the spirit, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out for you. Uh, John, I believe it's First John chapter five, kind verse. I started two and read three. It says, "By this we know that we love the children of God of Yahweh when we love Yahweh and keep His commandments." Right? For this is the love of God. Right? This is the love of God Yahweh that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not what grievous which means it's not hard for us to want to please the lord and obey him it's not hard for us to want to keep his commandments that's when you love the lord man you know that that's what it means so going back uh, i'm gonna go back to jude uh just real quick real quick as it says all right in jude 20 uh 21 Keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, right? Keeping his commandments and looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, unto eternal life. What is that mercy of the Lord? Like I just said, eternal life, right? Not allowing you to partake with the rest of our nation, the two thirds, in this thermonuclear destruction, this fire that's coming from these ICBM nuclear missiles, right? Which is what the Lord has set up for Babylon the Great Judgment, which we know as America, you know, through, through the Spirit, right? So uh, that leads me to. My next point, I want to go to the book of Baruch, all right, chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 9, um, and this shit, you know, hit, hit the point pretty hard, so this is Baruch chapter 2 from the top, therefore, the Lord Yahweh hath made good his word, 
which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judged Israel and against our kings and against our princes and against the men of Israel and Judah. You know, so that covers all 12 tribes. It says to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven. All right. As it came to pass in Jerusalem, according to the things that were written in the law of Moses. Right. So everything that the Lord uh, spoke to Moses to proclaim against us that Moses wrote, man, it happened to us and it is still happening to us to this day. And where can you read about those things? And those can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, you can go read that. Also, Leviticus 26. You can go read that, man. It, it tells you all the things that the Lord has spoken against his people, man, that, are, that have happened. And going on to more of the fact of what is still left to happen to us before we can be redeemed out of this hellhole, man, what we call America. It says, verse 3, that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter, right? Going into, you know, the famines that were in the land. The Lord gave us up to these filthy acts, right? And these perverse acts and wickedness because we did not seek after his true, righteous, and sincere spirit, man, in love and faith. It says, moreover, he had delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be as a reproach and desolation among all the people round about where the Lord has scattered them, right? So the Lord has scattered us to all these kingdoms who are round about us, man. We've been, we've been, and, and we've been subject to, to slavery, oppression, you know, reproach and desolation in these lands, man, underneath these kingdoms. And it says, thus we were cast down and not exalted because we have sinned against the Lord, our power, Yahweh, our power, and have not been obedient unto his voice, right? Which is his word, these scriptures, right? These prophecies, we weren't obedient and we, we weren't uh, praying and, and fasting. And looking forward to the things that he spoke, man. So the Lord casted us down when he promised us that we would be exalted because of our own stiff-necked and hard-headed uh, deeds. The Lord casted us down, man. And that's why we're at the bottom today. That's why we're considered the minorities now. That's why we're in the ghettos and the slums still to this day, right? Because what the Lord is doing unto us, man. We're not seeking his spirit in sincerity and truth. It says, verse 6, to the Lord our power, Yahweh our power appertaineth righteousness, right? The Lord is, he's always been righteous, man. He hasn't failed not one time in his righteousness, right? But it says, but unto us and to our fathers, open shame as appeareth this day, right? Why? Because we're still in slavery under the so-called white man, woman, and child, man. We're, we're still in slavery and bondage, you know? We're, we're in open shame right now. When, when people think about us, they think niggas, you know, you know? Like that's shameful, man. When they think about us, they say think about the children of Yahweh, right? The the righteous, right? The people who we need to be like, right? But we're not we're not um holding that status in the earth right now because the Lord has stripped that from us. Uh he's allowed the so called white man to strip that, that identity from us, right? And and, and and allowed them to call us things like niggas and monkeys, you know, porch monkeys and, and all other types of uh, wickedness, which is also found in Deuteronomy 28, man. These are part of the curses that the Lord pronounced against us because of our own wickedness, man. And it says, uh, uh, the point, I'm going to read verse 7, for all these plagues are come upon us, which Yahweh hath pronounced against us. Yet have we not prayed before the Lord, Yahweh, that we might turn everyone from the imaginations of his wicked heart. Right, so this is really the key point of this exhortation, right? It's, it's to get us to realize and to humble ourselves down and realize how in the hell, right? We can obviously, we can acknowledge when we're being done wrong. You know, anyone who has a, a piece of common sense can, can see an act done to them that they don't agree with or that they believe could have been better or gone a different way. That's, that's simple. But the only thing that Israel has yet to do in faith is what? As it says in verse 8, yet have we not prayed, right, before the Lord, Yahweh. That's the thing. How in the hell can you expect change? How in the hell could, could you ask or how in the hell could you uh, want the Lord to do something else for you if you're not even asking him to do it, right? If, you, if you're not crying and, and like uh, the word praying goes into asking, requesting that the Lord do something, why would he do it? 
right? If you don't care enough to ask, why would he care enough to do it? You know, it doesn't make sense. And that's why it says, yet have we not prayed before the Lord that we might turn everyone from the imagination of his wicked heart, right? It's because you're more worried about what's going on in your own mind and the, the wicked, sinful, fleshly lusts and desires that you have in your mind that you want to fulfill. That you could you can uh, care less about the Lord's will and about what the Lord can do for you. It's all about what you can do for yourself, right? And that's why you haven't turned to the Lord and prayed and asked him to change the situation around for you and no i'm not speaking to you damn christians when i say that man because we already know how you christians just wear up and down y- y- y'all are the power of prayer y- y'all are the y'all are the lord's house y'all just know the lord's dealing with y'all haven't y'all been praying to, to jesus for over them a <laughs> hundred years <laughs> and probably more than that you know i'm just spitballing here but man the lord is not dealing with you christians just flat out i'm, I'm speaking to this the true, sincere, hopeful elect, man. How in the world can we expect the Most High to want to to fulfill His side of the promise if we're not even asking Him to? All right? You can know about the promise all you want, but if you're not faithfully believing in that promise and faithfully asking the Lord to turn this thing around for us, why would He do it, man? If no one desires it, why would He do it? This, this goes back into this whole exhortation, man. We have to get back and realizing how important prayer is, right? You can you can sit up and read all night and all day and know all the breakdowns, but what what are you doing if not praying, right? The Lord told us to, to watch and pray, right? Watch for these prophecies to unfold and happen and pray, right? You know, they go hand in hand. You must pray, all right? And I'm going to uh, go ahead to actually, I'll read verse 9 as well. It says, wherefore the Lord watched over us for evil, and the Lord hath brought it upon us. For the Lord is righteous in all his works, which he hath commanded us, right? So because we're not praying to the Lord and asking him to do good things unto us, he's watching over us for evil. You know, since he doesn't, since we're not asking him, hey, Lord, you're not crying unto him. Hey, Lord, Father, Holy Father, fulfill your good, your good will, your good promise of salvation. If we're not asking him to do that, clearly we don't care. You know, clearly. So why would, why wouldn't he be evil towards us? Since we're being evil towards him, we're not loving him. We're not being faithful and obedient to his voice. Why? You know, why? Why would he be good? You know, he's gonna he's gonna send these evil. He continues to send these evil things upon us, man. Just just like we're continuing to seek after and the lust after after evil deeds to put on our own selves. You know, why would the Lord change that? And uh, I just want to bring a quick quick real quick point. Uh, Cause I did just mention Christian a second ago And it got me thinking like Man the real reason the Lord is not dealing with y'all man Is simple I'm gonna bring it out real quick it's, uh, John chapter 9 verse 31 And uh It reads Now we know That Yahweh here is not sinners That what? I'm gonna read it again Alright Cause I think that went over your head It says John 9 and 31 Now we know Right this is a fact There ain't no questions about it that yeah, how will here is not sinners, right? So you Christians, right? You Israelites who who aren't seeking our true power, Yahweh by Shem Shai, in spirit and in truth, and spirit meaning, you know, the spirit of the commandments, being holy and righteous, and in truth, which goes into the same thing, the spirit of the, the law, statutes, and commandments, right? In these words, right? If you're not seeking the truth of the scriptures and righteousness by the law, the Lord is not hearing you, man. He, 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 he's not even <laughs> He don't even have his angels Watching over you Right And making sure that nothing evil comes to you Why? Because he has his angels Watching the, the, the sincere righteous brothers Meanwhile you over there to the side Getting beat the hell up by these demons <laughs> The Lord is You know That's how the Lord works man But it says But if any man be a worshiper of Yahweh And doeth his will Him he heareth Right So if you you know, you're trying to not only just grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, continuing to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, then, you know, well, ultimately, like I said, man, you're not going to continue growing and your prayers are not going to be heard unless you're seeking true righteousness and you're actually praying, you know, if, if you're not praying, of course, the Lord is not going to hear your prayer. And if you're not being righteous, even if you do try to pray, the Lord, he, he's not worried about it. So it goes hand in hand you got to have the faith and understanding of the scriptures and you have to have the faith in order to know 
that prayer you know is is a key part in this thing as well man how can you how can you expect something to be done for you if you don't ask you have to ask man the lord is our master and we are his servants if we need something he said to ask you know asking you and you will receive you know roughly paraphrasing however a lot of brothers they i, I believe a lot of brothers know of this but it, it just kind of gets pushed to the side like it's not that important man even how shy prayed man before he had to endure that that suffering on the cross man how was i prayed and asked the lord man take this cup from me man <laughs> that like yeah how was i knew hey if i asked my father he would do it man yeah how was i knew that and, and he he didn't want to go through it and he prayed to his father he asked him father take this cup from me All right now it was the lord's will that he didn't take the cup from him however doesn't change the fact that that's what Yahweh Shah asked for. He knew the power of prayer, man. Yahweh Shah knew the power of prayer. Actually, let me get this point real quick. Let me see. All right, Mark chapter 14 and verse 35. All right. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm gonna read this one. So this is Mark chapter 14 and verse 34. It reads, And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. He's talking to his disciples. Tarry ye here and watch, right? So y'all was trying to say, Look, I'm going through a lot, man. Can you, can you, can you be here and, you know, and, and watch? You know, while he's gonna do what it says, verse 35, and he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. What is the hour? The hour where he's offered up as a sacrifice for the Lord's people, man. Yahweh shot, he knew this was coming. He, he's over here stressing about it, man. He's like, man, well, I don't wanna die for these wicked ass niggas, man. They don't love me. <laughs> they don't love you, Lord. If, if he could, man, just take take this hour from me, man. The, this is Yahweh's only begotten son, man, in, in true, full righteousness. And he's asking the Lord, take this cup from me. All right? It says, verse 36, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Right? And that's what you got to understand, man. He even acknowledged that even seeking his father in prayer, he said, Father, all things are possible unto you. Because he knew his father could take the cup away, but that, that wasn't the Lord's will, clearly, because he still was offered up and slain for us, man. And he and he's going to be glorified for that in, in, this, in these latter days, man. Us, you know, sincere believers, we already see his, his, his glory through these scriptures, man. But the Lord is going to reveal his true and fullness of his glory. In these, in these latter days when he comes back to redeem us, man. And to judge you, you, you heathen. He says, verse 37, And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, thou sleepest. Uh, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak, right? So, so Peter, this is a good example for my point earlier. You know, that's the spirit. Because I wasn't actually going to bring this out. I didn't have it uh preset but the spirit you know reminded me of this and i had to bring it up man peter right which is the the stone that this truth was founded upon even according to how shy peter man a, a man who had wisdom knowledge and understanding he was supposed to be praying with yahweh shy right separately of course but they're supposed to be praying together you know at the same time he came and seen peter asleep and he said peter you sleeping man couldst thou not watch could it's not thou watch one hour? You know, the Lord asking you couldn't just pray for an hour with me, man. I'm about to be offered up for you. You couldn't even pray for an hour with me, you know, for me and or for yourself. Like, come on, man. And he says, Y'all should said, watch ye and pray. That's a commandment, man. He said, watch and pray. Watch meaning, you know, stay in into these prophecies, man. So that way when these things unfold on the earth, you know what time it is, man. And it says, and pray. He didn't say just watch. He didn't say just pray. He said watch and pray. They go hand in hand. 
just like just like faith without works is dead so is watching and praying man you can you can watch and know the prophecies but if you pray if you're not praying why would the lord deliver you from those prophecies man why and if you praying and you just praying but you have no understanding of the scriptures man the lord is not dealing with you man because <laughs> who are you praying to and why are you praying to them they can't do nothing for you so like that's why i say they go hand in hand it says lest she enter into temptation right which that applies to these uh it's double for it applies to these philosophies and doctrines but it also falls into the hour temptation right which is gonna come upon all the earth and then that dwell therein right through the beast the, uh, America, which is the mark of the beast, which goes into the RFID chip, the microchip that's going to be enforced, right? That's the hour of temptation. And then it says the spirit truly is ready. There's a lot of Israelites whose spirits want to attain righteousness, but the flesh is weak, man. The flesh is going to go after, go after, and seek after those wicked imaginations that are in their hearts, right? That that they're looking forward to fulfilling, right? That's what the flesh does, and that's what the flesh is going to do. That's why you have to pray, man. You got to pray and ask the Lord to remove these spirits off you, man. So that way your spirit can fulfill its desires, right? Which is true righteousness, man. You got to pray, you know? All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and I only got a few more verses, but... Lord willing, this be edifying, man. Uh, First Kings. Anything. First Kings. Read chapter eight and verse twenty-eight and three. All right, and it reads, "Yet thou, yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Yahweh, my power, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer." Which thy servant prayeth before thee today, right? It says that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there. Now, this is King Solomon talking about the temple that he had built, you know. And King Solomon is asking the Lord to hear his cry and hear his prayer and supplication, right? Which goes into the same point, man. Even King Solomon knew that he still had to pray, even though he, he was in charge of building the temple for the Lord, man. Solomon was not like, hey, I built this temple, so I'm good. No, nah, man, he's still praying, man. Still praying. And through the Spirit, if you already know or if you don't know, King Solomon was Yahweh Shai, man. Before he came in the flesh as the holy and only begotten son, man. He was he was King Solomon. You know? And it says, um, continuing on through verse 29, uh, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. Right? And that's a good point, man. When we pray, we're not just supposed to just pray any kind of way. I'm going to get another scripture about that in a second, about how you're supposed to pray. However, you're also supposed to pray toward that place, right? Towards Now, the temple is not still standing. However, that area and that land is still what the Lord is dealing with. That is still the promised land, man, which the elect of the children of Israel are going to receive in their salvation, man. That land flowing with milk and honey, which is the promised land that was promised to Abraham then Isaac and then Jacob which turned into Israel which you know is the 12 tribes of Israel right his sons that is the promised land for that seed that chosen seed so that's why we're supposed to pray toward that place that land right that's the land the area that the Lord is dealing with and that's in the east man it says in verse 30 and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest, forgive, right? So when you're truly seeking a forgiveness from the Lord so he can turn you away from your wicked deeds back to serving him in righteousness, you're praying towards his place, you know, right? You're repenting, you're acknowledging your sins, turning away from them, and praying and asking the Lord to forgive you and give you the strength to build you up to resist those sins and also to be able to grow in more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that way you won't be easily tempted back into the world right back into that flesh that fleshly nature man so that leads me to uh mark chapter 9 and i'm gonna read verses 14 to 29 real quick it says and when he came to his disciples and this is basically a little story a little you know clear example of how strong and how important prayer actually can be man. i'm not just saying you know Hey Lord, how you doing today? You know, uh, so yeah, you know, I'm still in slavery. You know, yeah, I hate my I hate my job and my boss. You know, uh, 
uh, give me a new job, you know, I want better pay, you know, let me be a supervisor and get the weekends off, that's not, that's not how we're supposed to be praying, man, so this is, I'm going to show you how serious uh, prayer actually is, and what are some of the results from not praying, as well as my next and final point of how we actually should pray, you know, what we should be praying about, asking the Lord for so this is Mark chapter 9, verse 14. It says, And when he came to his disciples, Yahweh Shai, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And it's not literally saying it's something stupid. This is it's a, a demon, and it's making him what what some people take the term offensively as retarded. You know, however, this he had a demon on him, man, an evil spirit. And it says, verse eighteen, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. Right? If you've ever seen a so-called you know retarded kid, that's what they do, man. And it says, and it says, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out and they could not all right cast this demon out of him the disciples couldn't cast this demon out man this evil spirit it says and he answered him and saith, "O faithless generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i suffer you bring him unto me man this goes into an example of why how i had to pray in that garden man he was tired of you niggas man y'all didn't have no type of faith in him or in his power and in the power that the Lord said you guys will have, man. You have, you have no understanding and no knowledge and no faith, man. Y'all should have said, man, bring him to me, man. It says in verse 20, And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child, right? So this man was born born like this man yet this i can't say this man did have enough faith to at least ask you how shot to do it but that still is no credit for you jakes man because y'all would go to the damn witch doctors and say well, shit i don't know fix them you know, and that's what you're supposed to do fix them that's the same way y'all were doing how shot like he was some damn like trick bag or some genie or some shit like well shit they're saying you can do miracles hey you do something for me that's why how shot came out came out there like you faithless generation man Y'all have no knowledge and no wisdom. Y'all wish I was still about to, you know, help him, but still it defeats the point, man. It's it's like putting a band-aid over a deep ass, um, you know, a deep ass. Uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh man, it's a certain word for when you have a, a deep cut. But um, that's the point, man. It's like putting a band-aid over a deep cut, man, and it's not healing you. It's not helping you, right? It's not the true surgery that you should need, but you know, it's it's something for the meantime, man. That's that's like what Yahweh Shai is doing with this child, man. It says, uh, verse twenty-two, and oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Right? So this demon, man, this this baby, so damn retarded through because of this demon. This child putting himself in fire. This child tossing himself in the ocean, trying to drown him. You know, it says, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. He's saying, if you can do anything. See, that's what I'm saying, man. These people don't have real faith in the Lord, man. They know about the tales and the stories that everyone's saying, but no one truly believes, man. Why? Because if they believe, so lucky, if they believe, they will be praying to the Lord and asking the Lord to do it, not saying, Lord, can you? What kind of sense is that? The same being, the same power that created you and formed you in the earth. You gonna ask him if he can do something? The question is, will he? Right? And, and the Lord, as we were earlier, man, the Lord is gonna always do for those who do His will. So there's no question about that. But it says, verse 23: How shall I say unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Ooh, boy, that's the spirit, man. How shall I cut that nigga straight to his face, man? says verse 24 and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears lord i believe help thou mine unbelief bro if you believe why do you need help believing man 
You cutting your own self. But this is the spirit that Jay's got right now in this world, man. Even while we're down at the plow, prophesying and teaching, Jay can come out and say, oh, yeah, I already know that. Oh, yeah, y'all keep doing what y'all doing. We asked Jay one question. Who are you? Oh, I'm black. Jay, so what the fuck? Do you not know what's going on or do you do know what's going on, man? Because black is a color in a crayon box, right? It's it's a, it's a descriptive word. It doesn't actually say what it is, man. You are not a color in a crayon box, right? You have an actual bloodline and a, an ancestry, right? A family tree, people that you come from, right? But Jake, but Jake swear they know it all. Jake swear they believe, but still asking for help to believe. Like, man, this shit is frustrating, man. I we're getting bits and pieces of the frustration that Yahweh had when he was walking amongst the earth. Cause ain't nobody on this earth that as frustrated as Yahweh Shah was, man, and still is to this day, man. We, the Lord is allowing us to have bits and pieces of that feeling of His heart, man. Cause that's what we're gonna need to be able to keep enduring, right, and have faith. But if you don't, if you don't know these things in the scriptures, and if you don't believe enough, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have the strength to continue to endure. Why? Because you weren't built up on our most holy faith, right, with prayer and supplication and repentance, man. But back to the story, Salaki. So it says, uh, verse 25. It says, When Yahweh saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, and so much that many said, He is dead. Right? So when the spirit came out of him, they just knew. Everybody else, when they see him, they like, oh, yeah, he's done. Everybody's just like, yeah, he's dead. You can go ahead and, you know, go ahead and start burying this, this child. He's dead. But Yahweh knew better, man. It says, but Yahweh verse 27, but Yahweh took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing. But by prayer and fasting. So what do you think Yahweh Shai had been doing, man? To be able to cast out this evil ass spirit, man. This the spirit of this child had to be like a damn egg uh the shit that you see in like them scary movies, you know, breaking any bones in a corner and you know, twisting up like a pretzel and then tossing jumping on shit and tossing yourself in flames and in the water and it's all types of wickedness, man. Yeah, how wish I was able to cast that spirit out of him because he was praying and fasting, man. That's a part of this thing too, man. Fasting. You gotta be willing to give up these things of the world and seek after the spirit, right? In order to grow in the spirit. And that's exactly what prayer allows and get and gives you gateways to do, man. You pray and ask the Lord, you know, Holy Father, and then we how about you, man? Shah, you know, give me the strength, you know, to fast and give me the strength to to seek out more of your righteous will and, and, and um, grow in understanding and wisdom, man. You know, and, and pray and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, man. And give you the strength to truly repent, which is to acknowledge your sins and turn away from them, man. All, all that, all those requests can be made through prayer, right? All of them. And that leads me to my final point, and we're gonna wrap it up, man. It's Matthew chapter 6. Uh, verse 6 to 13, man. This is how Yahweh instructed us to pray, all right? And, and something specifically that we should always constantly be praying about without ceasing, man. If you're truly sincere about these scriptures and about this truth, right? This is this is the, the bare minimum that you should be praying about, man, daily. It says, Matthew 6 and verse 6 on down, says, But thou, when thou prayest, Enter into thy closet, right? Into a secret place, right? Where you can be alone. It says, And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. Not to your dad, your, your, you know, because the scriptures say, Call no man your father. So it's not talking about your, your mother and your father. So call, you know, he says, Pray to you, pray to thy father. That's your how, our heavenly father, man. Your how. It says, Which is in secret. How is he in secret? Because he's up in the heaven of heavens, man, in paradise. Ain't none of us up there with him, man. He's in secret. Mm -hmm. It says, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And that's a cut to Christianity as well, man, because they pray in masses. They pray in big ass groups holding their hands in a circle, really singing kumbaya in their head, but they praying out loud, talking about, you know, Jesus, 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 man. That's folly, man. When you're praying like that in front of people, 
And if you praying like, you know, I need a hundred dollars, you yelling out, I need a hundred dollars, I got my bills, I need a hundred dollars. And you go home, you got a hundred dollars in the mailbox. Ain't no telling which person out of that congregation sent you that hundred dollars, man. That's not how the Lord operates, man. You pray to the Lord in secret. That way, when he rewards you openly, you know it was nobody but the Father who rewarded you with that, man. And that rewarding you openly also goes into this kingdom, man. We praying and repenting and fasting in secret, man. So that way, when we receive the salvation, the Lord is going to reward us with those crowns openly in front of all the heathen and in front of all the world, man. Them heathen aren't going to be the ones turning around and be like, yeah, we're sorry. You can roll America. That's not going to happen, man. It's not going to happen. The Lord is going to give us our kingdom back, right, through his spirit and power, right, which is who we're praying to and relying on, man. No, nothing and no one but the Lord. And it says in verse 7, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking, right? Christians pray for the same things day in and day out. You know, Lord, I need a promotion at my job. Lord, pay my bills. Lord, give me a new car. Lord, I want a new house. All right, Lord, I'm coming to you again. Uh, I need my bills paid. I know you heard me last night. I'm praying in the morning. Give my, I need my bills paid. I'm too stressed. Give me a new job. I hate my boss. You know, things like that, bro. And, and Christians, they like to do those long, drawn out, you know, hour prayers. Even you can think back to those family dinners when for celebrating Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, right? That holiday that they celebrate, man. You got, your, you got your old granny sitting at the uh, Thanksgiving table with a big ass turkey and, and all the other shit. And she got to, all right, everybody, come on in. Hold your hands, bow your head, close your eyes. All right. Jesus, we thank you. You know, you see, that's folly, man. And then they pray for a whole damn near hour or two, man. The food is cold. I want to go home. I'm tired of sitting here. I, I was hungry an hour ago. You know, I done fell asleep twice. You know, that's, that's vain, man. That's how the heathen pray, man. That's how wicked Israelites pray, man. They, they don't know the Father. The Lord doesn't delight in those long-ass, drawn-out prayers. The Lord, man, the Lord said, come to me, quick, short, to the simple, to the point. Tell me what you need. Ask of me and believe and leave believing that what you ask for will happen. And whether I do it or not is not the point. You know, the Lord said he, re he rewards the righteous. He hears the prayers of the righteous. So whether he does it or not, it's his will. However, your job is to come to him as sincere as possible and believe that what you're asking him to to receive in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah will be done, right? And what is the thing that we should be asking him for to be done? Let's read it. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask. Like I said, he doesn't want to hear no two-hour uh, excerpt about your life like he doesn't know already he knows right he knows your life he knows who you are well and i'm gonna i'm gonna retract that statement you know he knows who the righteous are you know the lord he, he doesn't know anyone else outside of righteous Israel. Right? he he has his eyes he has his ears open to the presence of sincere righteous man he's that's who he's dealing with man so he knows them right so Continuing on, man. It says, verse 9, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? All praise and honor and glory be to the Father, which is in heaven, man, because he is holy, right? It says in verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So that's what we're supposed to be asking about, man, for the Lord's holy, righteous kingdom to not just stay up there with him in heaven. Lord, bring that down to the earth for us. That's, that's what we want. That's what the few sincere righteous believers want, man. We want that heavenly kingdom to the earth. That's what we're praying and asking for day in and day out. Lord, restore your kingdom, man. The, the, the nation of Israel, right? Bring that righteousness, righteousness back to the earth. And it says, give us this day our daily bread, right? Now that's twofold. You know, we need bread to survive daily. You know, that goes into food, eating. However, that's the Christian's understanding of it. It does apply still. However, this daily bread, you're supposed to understand through the spirit, man. Give us this this day our daily bread. What is the daily bread that we need this day to survive and to live so that we can see not even just more days, but tomorrow? That that heavenly bread, that daily bread is your house shot, man. He is the bread of life, right? Nice. Let me get that. Let me get that real quick. Just prove that we can keep going. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. John chapter, chapter, chapter six. 
and verse 48. Yeah, boom. Straight up. Y'all wish I said it, right? <laughs> uh, John chapter 6 and 48. I am the bread of that bread of life, right? How wish I is, right? The bread of life. And that bread of life also refers back, as it continues in the verses, back to that bread that literally fell from, from heaven for our forefathers, man, that they didn't understand what Yahweh Shai. However, like I said, that uh, Matthew 6 and 11 give us this day our daily bread. That's Yahweh Shai, Lord. We need Yahweh Shai to come back. He's going to be the tool uh, to bring that heaven, the kingdom that's in heaven, to the earth. Man. Yahweh Shai is going to be the one to do that. That's why we're praying. We're asking for the same thing. Lord, send us Yahweh Shai. He's out there in heaven with you. Bring that heaven down to the earth and restore your kingdom, man. Send your house side down to the earth and restore righteousness. Man. That's our prayer. That's our daily prayer, man. And it says in verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, right? We want to be forgiven. You know, you got to bring this out, man. When you pray to the Lord, you got to be serious about this. We want to be forgiven of our debts. Why? Because if you're not forgiven, by the time your house side comes back, which is what you asked for, First, then you're gonna die, man. He's gonna slay you with the sword, especially with these this thermal thermal nuclear fire, this thermal nuclear destruction, man. So if you're not praying to the praying to the Lord and true righteousness when you're praying this prayer, you're condemning yourself, man. Cause you already asked for the kingdom to come, man. If the kingdom comes, why are you praying that and you don't agree with who your house shy is or what he's coming to do, you're condemning yourself, man. And it says verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, right? Preserve us from that hour of temptation, right? That that when America, in the scriptures that we know as Babylon the Great, right? The mother of harlots, you know. Uh, yeah, Babylon the Great, which is going to be the nation that brings out the mark of the beast, right? America, that RFID chip, that is the hour of temptation, right? We don't want the Lord to lead us into the hour of temptation. Like... The rest of the earth is going to do man we don't want to we don't want to follow them deliver us from evil that's our prayer man send you how to deliver us from this evil man as it says for thine is the kingdom the, the kingdom that's going to come is the lord's man and, and we sincerely want to be a part of that right through his spirit through and doing his will man we want to be a part of that and it says for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Right, so that's that's the the prayer that we need to be sending out day in and day out, man. If you're truly sincere about this word and this truth, man, this is the prayer, and this is how you should pray it, man. And also, I have it actually this prayer in the Hebrew because what we also need to do is, you know, put off uh, the old man and put on the new man, as the scriptures say, right? Leave these worldly things behind and put on this new man, this new spirit of life, right? Being born again. So that means you can't just just stay in kindergarten class and, and say this prayer in, in English like it is right here. You got to go back and you got to pray to the Lord in his language, right? Which is that, that Hebrew, as I was explaining earlier, that Paleo-Hebrew language, man. So this prayer in Hebrew, I'll throw it up on the screen for you. And uh, you, you should also screenshot it, you know, if you don't already have this image in your phone. This is the prayer in Hebrew that you should be saying, man, when you're praying to the Lord. And I'm going to, I'm going to. Uh, read it in Hebrew for you uh, if you're unsure how to pronounce certain things. However, this is, like I said, the prayer that you need to be praying. And it's the same Matthew 6 and uh, 6 through 13 prayer, man. So, as it says at the top, uh, Adawan Palal, you gotta remember that Hebrew doesn't read like English. Hebrew, the ancient Paleo Hebrew, reads from right to left, right? Not left to right like English. So, at the top, it says the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew, Adawan Palal, right? And this is as the prayer goes. Abinawu, right? Our Father. Shabbat Shamayam, which in heaven. Kadash, holy. Haya, be. Shamka, your name. Yahweh, most high. Malakwathka, your kingdom. Thaba, come. Ratazaka, your will. Haya, B, Aisha, done. Barataza, in earth, Kawa, as, Haya, B, Bashamayam, in heaven, Nathan Lanawa, Nathan Lanawa, 
give us lakaam bread call your wam all day wasalak nawa forgive us chawa wath nawa our debts kasalak nawa as we forgive to our bath yanawa our debtors walaa and not tabayahanawa lead us banasaya one in temptation aba but hawashinawa deliver us mayan from ra evil kaya for laka to you hamalakwa the kingdom waha allah and the power waha dapa ara and the glory la wal yamyan forever amen amen right so that's what that's how you're supposed to pray the lord's prayer you don't literally have to go back and forth through the hebrew to the english like i just did that's for your edification sake right but go through read the hebrew and that's how you pray and you have to always 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 in the prayers in the name of yahweh by shem yahweh shot by shem akak kodash right and that's you have to acknowledge the father in the name of his son in the name of the holy spirit right cuz that's how we're coming to the father you can't just go to the father and be like hey father i want this you can't just go to the son hey father hey son you do this right you got to come to the father in the name of his son in the holy spirit right which is the wisdom and all the understanding of the scriptures right so like i said I mean, with that i hope this exhortation was edifying to the sincere and hopefully let right and with that i say call the lord yahweh by shem yahweh shai by shem akakodash wa da ba that's america so long